Welcome to X Games Real Street, presented by Nextcare. I think the best thing about skateboarding is that it's just a personal challenge between you and your skateboard. There's no team out there that matters. There's no rules that matter. There's nothing but this mental and physical challenge between you and the skateboard. With other sports, the goal is you get on that team and you play against other teams and then you want to win a championship. It's nothing like skateboarding. There are killer skateboarders who are some of my favorites who don't skate any contest whatsoever. And they skate in the street and they film video parts. That's how professional street skateboarders make a living is off of these video parts. So much goes into making these parts happen. I mean, blood, sweat, and tears in the hopes just to land this trick one time. You see this in a video and you think, oh, that's skateboarding, they just go out and do this, you know? That's, that's not how this works. Like, these guys work hard to get these tricks and sometimes they'll never do it again in their life. This aspect of the real street contest is so amazing because the general public now gets to view the truth of street skateboarding as skateboarders view it. Skateboarding is super difficult to judge because it's such a subjective sport. At least a quarter of the people are going to disagree with whatever decision you make, no matter what. And that's just how it is. What I'm looking for as a judge is I'm looking for really difficult maneuvers, risking it. I'm looking forward to seeing who goes. I'm all in, I'm trying to win. There's so many variables of why you might like something the best in skateboarding. And in a video part context, the skater, the tricks, the spots they skate, trick difficulty is not always enough to be the best video part, I feel like personally. I'll be looking more from a video making standpoint, like some of those notes might ring a little harder for me. For this 10th year, Real Street, they got a heavy lineup. I mean, all these guys are the extreme level of where skateboarding's at. These are some of the best of the best that exist. What am I looking for in this contest? I'm looking for originality, pushing the boundaries of progression of skateboarding, the level of difficulty as far as big stairs, big gaps, handrails that are hard to skate. Style is very important in skateboarding. It's not just about the level of difficulty, but really how you do that trick. Skateboarding is so subjective that I would assume that we're all going to have a different outlook on the, who the winner should be. All right, Mike, right here. Chris's approach to skateboarding is like a hungry kid. You know, he acts like today's his last day to skateboard every day. In my line of work, this is a blessing, you know? You're really thankful to have people who bring it from themselves. It's, it's Chris, I just have to capture Chris. This is my fourth year in Real Street. I keep coming back because I like to film in general. I think it's one of like the more street skating type of contest. I wouldn't say I do anything out of my normal routine for these. It's just like going out and filming and hoping for the best. 
the cool thing about skating with Chris is you get to pretty much any spot and he can figure something out to, to do there. You know, he's a really versatile skater. Typically people know his jumping skills because that's what stands out. But, you know, ledge tricks, rail tricks, hubbers, it's just like, how do I get there as fast as possible and just do it and let's go. What's the, what's the next trick? I'm not like too influenced by others. I go out and try to make myself happy, if that makes sense. Like do something I'm gonna be proud of, you know what I mean? Like knowing that I pushed myself. After that moment, like that's kind of like that peak where I just was like, okay, I know I'm supposed to be here and I know there's things out there that I'm supposed to accomplish and be an example for something. Welcome back to X Games Real Street, presented by Nextcare. I was born in Glendale, Arizona. Kind of like did all my years of education and you know, I, I kind of had a, a lot of mixed group of friends I hung out with. I had my cousins who were like my day ones, you know, I was with them all the time. They were kind of like, you know, in the banging and stuff like that. So I had kind of a lot of different influences and I was on like football teams. I was in a dance group for years. I, I can't even tell you how much like I really loved dancing. Like it was all I did, my sister danced. And so it was like nonstop. All of a sudden, you know, one of the homies just started like bringing a skateboard around. Off the bat, I was able to ride the board, like the bounce and everything was good, but I just was eager to learn more. There was no restrictions for me wanting to skate. I just had to pick up my board and go. Deshaun Jordan is a lifelong friend. I thought he was really annoying at first, honestly. He was a little kid who would do all better tricks than I ever would. Hey, you know, man, it's up or what? I like that one. He was undeniably talented, and I saw it from a young age that he had something really special. Sometimes he would just go off and do his own thing, not usually with the worst intentions, but the situations would sometimes turn into something a little crazier than I think anyone expected. It was hard uh, for me to get out of that zone of like, you know, wanting to party and stuff, you know, my homies that I was hanging out with and going to school with, and so it wasn't until like the last time we were on our way to a party. Next thing you know, like just gunshots start going off. The car just starts getting like lit up. Doom, doom, doom. After that moment, like that's kind of like that peak where I screwed my head on straight and just was like, okay, I gotta be serious. Like I know I wanna skate and I know I'm supposed to be here and I know there's things out there that I'm supposed to accomplish and be an example for something. Deshaun's career really, I think, sparked when he won Tampa AM. And just like the emotion that he had, you could see he slams his board on the ground right when they announced his score. And you just knew that this person was pouring a lot of himself and all of his life situations into what he was doing on his skateboard. Before he was exposed to so much dangerous stuff or crazy situations, where now he gets to make a living doing something that literally puts a smile on his face while he's doing tricks. And I just, I love filming that. For us, and being us together is way bigger than filming the part and doing the skating. It's just kind of like for everything like we've been through, and to put some work of us being together like out there, that's like the most satisfying thing right there.
the madness of skating is just when you start overthinking a trick. You, you have a feeling that you know how to do this and you just want to prove to yourself that you can do it. Sometimes falling really hard can just make you want it that much more. It means that you're getting a step closer in a way, even though it may be the, the hardest slam. You end up doing the worst case scenario and you know you got it over with. And you know it can only go up from there. Making a trick, it just gives you a feeling of accomplishment that you can't really get from most other things. A good feeling that people get addicted to, I guess. Video parts are pretty much everything for me. I put a lot of time into thinking about what tricks I want to be in there. Video parts can last forever if they're really good, you know? What I'm trying to capture with Mason for this part is just hopefully make it memorable and show his tricks as best as I can. Make sure everyone knows that they're really gnarly. Pretty much everything I've filmed has mostly been with Ryan. Definitely would not have done this contest with anyone else. For Mason's Real Street, the most memorable session for me is the bump over bar. I think I went there four times in total. And it's at a restaurant, and it's open almost all the time. He gets one try every five minutes or 10 minutes because of cars. When it comes to skating, you just literally have no idea what could happen because we have all these elements that we have to battle against. Kicked out by cops, kicked out by people at the restaurant. There's just so many factors that went into it. The average pedestrian probably thinks we're insane, which we are, but it means a lot to us, I guess. We had to go Thanksgiving morning at like 9 a.m. Most filmers wouldn't be down to go film on Thanksgiving, but it ended up working out that day. Felt good. Kicking it off with Jocelyn, that's a pretty firework part. You know, there's like that intense energy that he brings to the table that I, yeah. I love. Started off with the front blunt backside flip out, you're just like, okay, like, yeah. where are we gonna go from there after that? They obviously like made it a point to make it like super like high energy, like lots of like tight fish eye and quick cuts. He has like maybe 10 extra tricks than everybody else. For real. It was switch back heels and switch flips and big spin front nose, nolly heel flip out. The tray flip crook is almost in a back nose grind position. Yeah, that was a surprise. That was a good part from Jocelyn. Let's keep moving on to Deshaun. What do you guys think? The laser flip back lip. That's the main one that pops out to me as well, too. That was like that. outrageously good. The only tricky thing with Deshaun's style of skating is A, he lands every trick really good, so it looks easier, and B, although they may be buck spots, like an ollie, whereas you have Jocelyn switchback healing 13s. And maybe that ollie is really, really hard, but it just doesn't have the same type of fireworks as wild flip tricks. But let's talk about Mason. It's almost like perfectly curated part, right? Like good solid tricks on good spots, and like yeah. a little bit of Super 8, a nice song. The back three off the bump over the trash can, I mean, which is a fairly simple trick in today's standards, but it goes back to once again, it's not only the trick that you do, but how you do it is so important. That blunt slide at the end of his part, I've been there, and wow, that's a big one. I thought it was great. All I remember was getting in, going, uh-oh, and then just on like a white flash, like boom. Welcome back to X Games Real Street, presented by Nextcare. 
I went pro 2018. It was a surprise. They got my family, flew my family out. It was, it was amazing. Just seeing your name on a board, on the bottom of your board, is like, or a board, you know, is like, that's one of the coolest things. <laughs> right after I turned pro, I was filming for Real Street, getting it going in, and then I was out in Philly on a filming trip. Landed a little off and like sat on my leg like real weird and fractured my fibula. I think this is like my worst injury so far. It sucks, but it's like just part of what you know skateboarding is. Everyone gets hurt. Oh! Say you were skating a certain obstacle and you get hurt on it, that might make you avoid skating that kind of obstacle for the rest of your skate career. Just knowing that you can get hurt, it's a never-ending battle with injuries and just trying to push yourself day in and day out. I don't know how these guys do it, and I respect it to the fullest. It's been fun watching Corey grow over the years, you know, because when I first met him, he was a real heavy rail chomper, kind of just from A to B, just going down the rail. And as the years progress, you can kind of see his his skating maturing, and we were looking for the weird stuff to skate, you know? As of, like, last week, I've been skating around again. I'm just taking it slow, like, skating everything again, like, not, like, jumping down, like, big stuff, you know, obviously, but just getting my, like, board back, getting my feel back. I got into skating, like, my sister got a board for her seventh birthday. I mean, I was one year old. I just went, grabbed my sister's board, and just, like, never stopped since. All I remember is just straight skateboarding. Oh, my. Oh. Florida has, like, a pretty good skate scene. I'd always do local contests, but the main contest when I was about 12 or something like that, maybe 11, my mom started taking me to skate park in Tampa. That's when all the industry heads go to a contest and look for kids, so that kind of was the start of it. Yeah. I was living in Florida, I was like, getting to the point where I was like, oh, I need to move to California and try to make a move with this because stuff's starting to happen. Yeah. Can't believe where I'm at. I can't believe like the people that I can call my friends. It's it's awesome. It's everything that I could have imagined and more. I was just, you know, just a normal dude in Florida, just skating with my friends and I mean, kept doing what I wanted to do and it all worked out. Our plan for Real Street at first just was to start off with the road trip. With California, there's a bunch of spots that everyone's been skating, but then when for the road trip, we can go to brand new spots. It kind of broadens the horizons of tricks I can do. So got one of like my main tricks in Oklahoma, which I'm super stoked on. So everything was going great. Went to Albuquerque for like the last stop. I pulled up to a 20 rail that has a drop on the side. And all I remember was getting in going, uh-oh, and then just, I was like a white flash, like boom. I just remember like, it was like a starfish just doing the cartwheel like down the rail and I just kind of let go of my camera and I was just like, and that's when we all ran up. Nothing bad happened, just had to stay off the board for a week, ice it up and work it out and you get thrown down, you gotta stand back up, keep it going. Every time I film a part or do something, I definitely want to do something new. So definitely with this one, I feel like I've completed my task and feel like I'm happy with it. I'm super stoked with what we came with.
So we just came off watching Corey Glick and Jamie Foy's part. So let's talk about Corey. In He's like too. solid, like flowy kind of dude. Does like hard tricks, looks good. Had some really good stuff in there. That overcrook on that bank. Yeah, that bank. Yeah, that overcrook on the bank to bar. That was probably my favorite. He had a great trick selection, but something overall just kind of lacked a bit of a oomph. <laughs> I think it should be noted that he also broke his leg while filming the part, so he had probably three months less than everybody else did to film. Wow. Um, well, he and still, he still, still put down those, those tricks. But what about Foy? Foy's part was heavy. I mean, you know I love Jamie. Coming off, breaking off big handrails like that. But the cool thing about Jamie is that's not where it ends. That's where it begins. I mean, he breaks off the big handrails, but he also is getting tech on ledges now. I mean, Jamie's kind of the all-around package for me. I think that that's a really good point about Jamie Foy and this part. He does do mostly everything except for a skate transition in this part. He's always going to be like kind of competing against himself. And that's how I felt that's watching this part. I was like, is this kinked rail like not as gnarly as the last one? You know what I mean? He's like on such a high level yeah. of skating that he like exists in his own realm in a way. And you can pull any trick out of his part and Chris Jocelyn, grab like their eighth trick in the video, and that could be half of pro skating's ender easily. My brother he became a professional NFL player going through those footsteps in high school. It was kind of crazy. All the coaches being like, come out for basketball, come out for football. And I'm like, oh, I just want to skate. <laughs> Welcome back to X Games Real Street, presented by Nextcare. I grew up in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, born and raised. I played like basketball, soccer, all that stuff, but I got really into hockey for a while. It was one of those things, we were like on a travel team, it was kind of serious, but we're young kids, like, should be having fun, doing whatever we want. So then I just got to the point, I told my parents, I was like, yeah, I, just, I don't want to play hockey anymore, I just want to skate, so. My brother he became a professional NFL player, going through those footsteps in high school. It was kind of crazy. All the coaches being like, come out for basketball, come out for football. And I'm like, oh, I just want to skate. <laughs> Once I started pursuing skateboarding more, he like, you know, show all of his NFL buddies. They just thought it was crazy what I could do on a skateboard. It's like a mutual respect for athletes. I don't know, I got respect for all sports, NBA players, NFL players, so I'm, I'm just a big fan of sports in general, so. I think Robbie's definitely one of those skaters that if you went to the spots that he skates in person, you would be like, that's insane, no one can skate this. You know, this isn't skatable. His pop is like three times as high as the average person, I think. Just the way he skates is so powerful. It's like, it's own style. Filming Real Street for us has been good. We've been working on it for probably like eight months now, so it's kind of just been stacking up, keeping everything that's the best. One of his last tricks is like a brand new spot and no one had skated it yet. I remember just showing up there being like, this thing is insane. There's a reason why no one's gonna skate this thing. And Robbie just like 180s it. I don't know, just kind of showcases how good he is. I feel like definitely in the streets where the best tricks happen, because people are always getting influenced by someone doing something new, and then they take it somewhere even further. People are always just trying to like push skateboarding and progress it. Getting hurt is all a part of skateboarding. For me, sometimes, you know, instead of looking at falls as, you know, things that 
I'm doing wrong. If I look at them all as lessons and things I can learn from, you know. I used to take falls as, you know, kind of like the heads up for me to stop and, you know, not be confident after it. But now, you know, I, I kind of look on the positive side of falls and, you know, I just tell myself to get back up again and do whatever I need to to make it. Next care for the win, now let's get it. Next try. My message for anybody, you know, out there falling or getting back up, just keep pushing. No matter how bad it hurts, you know, if you if you are physically still able to keep going, get back up and just get that feeling of landing it. I grew up in a little surf town called San Clemente, which it's beautiful, but the I don't know, some of the kids there are pretty torturous. So I, uh, at a young age, made friends with a bunch of kids in North County, San Diego. And that was kind of the start of uh, the rest of my life, I guess. When I was like about 12 or 13, I was skating with Riley Hawk and Taylor Smith pretty much every day and a bunch of our other buddies. And yeah, Kirby got introduced to the crew right around that same time. So he would always come down here and we would skate from Friday to Sunday, and it kind of just became a tradition. There was always a video camera around, and we always were just like little kids obsessed with all of the skate videos at the time, you know? And there was other like crews around us, independent like kids who were making their own skate videos that we looked up to. It got a little bit more like put in my hands to like make the videos. It always felt like we were doing something though. It didn't feel like we were like faking the funk ever because we were so like, passionate and it felt like we were doing it you know so then once we actually started like going on trips or getting you know sponsors and stuff it felt like we had already been doing it you know we just pretended we were doing it when we were little i guess real street's not really a contest to me it's more of just another uh project uh for yourself and for your friend, you know, meeting at Jacob's house in the morning like usual and going to some spots with some bros and maybe suffering, maybe not, I don't know. But that's just been the process forever, so everything was pretty normal, <laughs> I guess. Like, it's crazy that we're still doing it and we haven't given up on it, you know? To us, it's the only thing that makes sense, you know? <laughs> it's like, I like pointing my camera at other stuff, but that's to support what I love to do to like support my friends' projects, you know. I mean, one of the reasons I'm in skateboarding is for video parts. Like whether, you know, I'm gonna win or not, like I'm still gonna do it. Until I can't walk, I'm gonna try. You know, I don't know. This is just for for us. Bobby Brockle. Yep. Arizona. That's you, dog. Skateboarding, Phoenix, you know. But was he skating in Arizona? Because that looked like broken down Detroit for the most <laughs> part. Wherever he was skating, it was ruthless. I like that last seal was like at least head tall for him. So for like an another skater, it's like gonna be yeah. like gigantic. And, and it does take away from some of the spots because I mean, I was watching the part and I was thinking, man, like it's just a 180. I'm watching just a 180, but it's probably a Savage 180. Some of those things just don't translate to video as well. I think it was great, probably but probably not the I don't think it was on the level, level as some like, of the other yeah. parts that we've seen so far. We just watched Taylor Kirby's part. 
I like people's energy just as much as I like their ability on their board. And whenever I see Taylor, he's just smiling and like, just the, the look on his face when he's skateboarding makes me happy. That kind of draws me to his part a bit more. Seems like he just goes to a spot, does a few things, has some laughs with his buddies, and like, yeah. he's just on to the next. Like, he wins for fun as far as yeah. that, the, the fun category. I think that he, he put it out there for the purpose of what we got out of it. Like, man, he looks like he's having a good time. Yeah. And these are sick tricks, and he's a sick skater. And ultimately, that's what all this is about. That's what skateboarding is about. I love skating rails. I, like, board slid my first rail when I was, like, six, probably. It just kind of got bigger over time. Welcome back to X Games Real Street, presented by Nextcare. I grew up skating in Huntington Beach, California. Me and my brothers, we did everything. Skate, surf, snow, bike. We probably all started around the same time, got skateboards for Christmas or something. My dad has always built us like little boxes and stuff out front of our house. Ever since we were little, like we had a little two by four with a metal coping on it and then they would get bigger and bigger. He's just always been supportive of us skating and doing what we want to do. My mom, too, would just all jump in a minivan with a bunch of friends, and they would, she would take us around Huntington, whatever spots we wanted to go to. I used to park my minivan at the end right here, blocking off the driveway. It had like a hundred dents in it. From, you know, the trash or their board would go flying. Growing up, we would definitely feed off each other, and we would just push each other to try new tricks and get better together. It's funny to see like the edited polished pieces of them creating like this like perfect brother vibe. But you know, they're brothers. They'll be like jabbing each other, they'll be trash talking each other, but they all genuinely care about each other so much. So every video part you're trying to progress, you're always trying to do better and better than your last one. And working with someone like Jared Lucas, who knows what I've put out and how I skate, so I'll do a certain trick, and then he'll be like, oh, what if you did this one to go with it, or this one that might be a little bit better? And so he'll be pushing me to try and better myself. It's kind of fun going under the scrutiny of the judges and whatnot. It's just fun, especially when you get to choose who you're filming with to create the best one minute that you could possibly create. And it's just a fun project. It's nice to like be out doing what we love to do and then it turns into a contest where you guys judge it. Today, Chris. We're uh, gonna head to Barstow today. It's gonna be kind of a mission because it's like out in the middle of nowhere, but uh, Chase has a kink girl he wants to skate, so I always trust his spots. They're always like pretty crazy. He wants to get something that's kind of like never been done. He wants to do 50 50 on the first down part, and then he wants to go to crook on the last part. So 50 50 to crook should be really good for his real street part. I think it's something that he needs. But there's always the chance, like, you drive that far and it might not go down at all, you know? You never know what's gonna happen. But it's all part of it. It's all worth it, you know? I was five years old when I started skating. My dad, in like the 70s, he skated a lot. And then he found a skateboard at work one day and that's when he brought it home and that's when I got introduced to it. So I, I definitely knew I wanted to skate my whole life from the second I started skating. He's done everything right in skateboarding. 
in the sense that he's not doing it for a job, he's not doing it, you know, for a gold medal, he's doing it because he actually loves it. There was a few years where I feel like Chase wasn't getting like the full love that he deserved. And it might've been because he, you know, he looked like a younger kid or, you know, I wasn't quite sure, but he really, he didn't let it stop him. He was gonna go grind a 30 stair rail, whether he gets paid to or not. I was at that point where I was gonna get a job and then all of a sudden it was just like overnight things were like, board sponsor, shoe sponsor, and then went pro, and that's like every skater's dream, you know? Like, at that moment, I was like, everything was worth it. That was like the best feeling ever. So Chase is the guy that like, I could drive by a 50 star handrail and I could take a photo of it and send it to him, and he's immediately just like, dude, let, let's go hit that. I love skating rails. I like board slid my first rail when I was like six, probably. It just kind of got bigger over time. I think about like the worst stuff, to be honest, like before I skate rails, I start thinking about like breaking bones and I like get so nervous. It kind of makes me that much more focused when I'm like thinking about that type of stuff. It like puts me in this like mode where I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna do that. The reason why it feels so good is because of how nervous you were beforehand. Like you were so scared to try that. Chris Ray, he's like my favorite person to film with. Chris has done really well in Real Street for the past years and like I'm just taking his advice pretty much. I'm doing the skating and I'm letting him do what he wants with the footage and I trust him. There's no doubt about that. Oh, right here, right there. As far as a contest for a video part, I've never been in one. This is my first one. That's why I'm like so excited because it's something new for me and it's just a cool opportunity. So we just watched all the videos, all the skaters broke it off for the 10 year anniversary of The Real Street, but we do have a winner. Welcome back to X Games Real Street, presented by Nextcare. So we just watched the last two parts and I really like Trevor's part. It was all really gnarly. It was filmed well, hard tricks. He does that buck switch back three, which is like just a bone crushing drop. That nolly front three over the rail. Uh, that was beautiful. That part was sick. I, I mean, one of the best parts that we've seen yet. I think Trevor's part is like a contender. I think it was, it was really well done all the way around. And I mean, I'm ranking it up there pretty high. Hands down, Chase, that just topped it for me. Right then and there, that topped it for me. It's all next level skateboarding. Hammer after hammer after hammer. My favorite take home was the board slide firecracker down that one like wedge to, to bricks. That feeble grind around that yes. double key curve thing, he's just like, Gah! Truth to be told, the part is very creative with one sort of note of skateboarding. I mean, outside of like three things is like almost all rails. Yeah. I mean, he had, he had that, that ollie out to front side wall ride grab off, the front board to faking and switch front side big spin. Although it wasn't the biggest set, it was still kind of a combo of not just a one big rail trick. Honestly, I came into this like thinking it would be like one really good part, a couple of medium, but if you're going by points, it's like marginal between each one. 
almost impossible to pick. It really does become subjective. And I always say this, there really is never a winner in skateboarding. And, and that's the truth, you know? Like this, everybody won that entered this competition. It's a bunch of friends pushing themselves to push the limits of skateboarding. And that's a beautiful thing. But we have to choose one. <laughs> we, have to, we have to pick who, who so, gets, so who you, gets you, medals. Do you have a pick? While we make our decision, it's time for you to make yours. Visit xgames.com forward slash real street and vote now for the fan favorite. So we just watched all those videos, tallied up the scores. It was a very difficult decision this year. These guys broke it off so hard for the 10th year anniversary of the real street competition. The bronze goes to Jamie Ford. One of the best skaters in the world, diverse, handrails, ledges, had some tech in there, gaps, he killed it. For the silver, this was really hard to choose between these first two, Chris Jocelyn. Chris's part was just from technical to ledge to handrails. I mean, the filming was great, the editing, the skateboarding, just killed it. But there has to be a winner. And the gold medal goes to, you wanna go tell him? Let's go tell him. Let's go tell him. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh my God, so close, so close. He's about to do this, man. We, we should go over there and surprise him, I think. I think it's about time. Yeah, Chase, you bring it up? Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. What up, Chris? Yeah, How's it going, man? Wow, I came to skate this with you, man. We'll break it off today, man. You think Let's I got go. it? Let's no, go. no. I want to give you guys some motivation right here. I'd like to present to you guys the X Games wow, Real dude. Street winners this year. Was yeah. yeah. What, 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 what? Oh, my God. Congratulations, dude. man. man. Dude. Sick filming, sick editing, sick skateboarding. Let me show you how this is done right here, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And congratulations, Thanks, guys, dude. man. Thanks. That's Woo! what's up. This year's winners, Real Street, oh Jace Webb and Chris Ray films. Nah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Damn, I'm dude. tripping right now. I want to give you a little extra hype, make this happen. I want to witness the magic in person here. Here we go, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the future right here, future! Uh, yeah! So dude. sick, man. So happy to witness that.